Okay, Tuesday, January 24, 2017. First thing that comes to my mind this morning after running through the charts real quick is the old saying, never short a dull market. Okay, markets go sideways the majority of the time. 70 to 80% of the time they go sideways. And it's sideways. Uh, these are two-day charts. So we have uh, basically a month and a half of going sideways in a lot of these markets. First things first, number one, when we break out of a sideways trading range, we get a trend, okay? Uh, if you take take a look here, this is Brent crude. You have a larger degree of sideways pattern here and it broke out to the upside. Now we have a tight pattern here, okay? What I'm looking for in all these markets is some sort of failure on here, okay? Uh, basically, in this case of like Brent crude, or this could be considered a pause, okay? It broke out and it, it's considered a pause before trading higher. In all these markets, I'm, what I'm looking for is that they attempt to go higher. Uh, they, they, you know, kind of like here, they poke their head through and then they fail and then they fall back, but then they take out the lows. What's gonna happen here? Since all these markets, uh, a majority of them are basically been trading sideways for a while. They're all going to they're going to all crack at the same time, okay. And as the ranges narrow, okay, these are two day charts. As these ranges narrow, the machines are are going to be a lot more sensitive here uh, because of the patterns. You're not getting the wide swings, okay. So what basically I'm saying is make sure you set all your alarms under the lows on here, okay. Some markets like the Russell, they're a little bit weaker uh, a pattern here than the rest of them. But, but place your alarms down below uh, the trading patterns um, uh, just in case they come through. And if they do break on the downside, then they, they'll continue on the downside. Then I'll have to say that the, a lot of these are topping patterns for now. But basically, what, like I said, what I'm looking for is that there's some sort of breakout and then failure, okay? You know, just like here, we're jabbed higher and then came back in. But I'm looking, I'm looking for um, failures up here because one, we're long in the tooth uh, for a lot of these. You know, two, um, uh, you're getting the pause. I mean, you could actually say that this is a shoulder or head, and it's working on another shoulder. Okay, but for Brent crude. Um, I still lean on the short side here uh, on on these uh, the money flows in here. You can see that the money flow is above price and it failed to hold. Um, but like I can't reiterate enough that make sure you have your uh, alarms and stops underneath here if there's a failure on these markets going forward. So this is on Brent crude, and I still lean sideways on on uh, oil uh, because of the money flow. Um, uh, and just kind of the pattern here, kind of treat this as like a bear flag. Uh, crude oil, same type of deal. You know, the money flows, you know, above the previous one and the, and the price is only so high. Okay, so any crack through here, like say 52, then probably will run down to 45. But when these markets do crack, because we have a lot of the sideways pattern, they're all gonna crack at the same time and you're, you're gonna get precipitous moves either up or down on these. When that, like I said, I'm looking for some sort of failure. You know, they poke their head through and they come back in and they can't hold it. Um, you know, they'll probably, you know, like I said, you know, never short a dull market if these things fail and then they come through and we get some precipitous decline. So don't be bored out of, out of, uh, out of these patterns here. Same type of deal here. Here's the, the net, uh, the S and P sideways pattern. Okay. Um, it's indecisive, like this candlestick here and the candlestick before it, indecisive. It's not sure what to do. So if it, if it does pop this morning, uh, the NASDAQ, I think, will probably be the leader this morning if we do run to the upside. You know, give it an hour or two uh, this morning to see if it can hold the trends. There is the, the morning breakout where if it, if it trades higher and then pauses and then follows through after the first hour, you go with that trend. It's, the, they, it's like the first hour breakout type thing. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting uh, and watching for if these markets do try to poke their head through and then fail. 
Okay. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm watching for. Here's the failure part. Um, uh, I think Briggs, it was shot down this morning. Um, I, like I said, I still like the pound in that, uh, breaking these down a little bit further here. You have your sideways thing. I'm sure a lot of you, it's, it's just, it's, but here, here's, we're back to this case too, is, you know, if you're in a long position or if you're in a short position, you know, writing some options against your position, you're collecting premium. Okay. But, uh, we've had, you know, a bunch of, uh, time to go by here. <laughs> All right, so it's kind of like the hot hand deal. You don't realize that something's hot, a pitcher or a football team or whatever till after the fact, and that's called hot hand. So um, like I said, when these things crack and they run, you better be prepared for these things, okay? Um, because it's the, the markets are basically, they're, they're boring people to death. You know, it's like, it's like I wrote, I think the last week or the week before I, I wrote about, you know, we're all sitting here waiting for something to happen. You know, it, either we continue higher and then we move into say 23, 2350 or something on the S and P or we crack lower and then we go into a, into a, uh, corrective mode. Um, uh, let's see here. So basically we have the pivots on the S and P's were 2260 and then what's this going to be 50, 2260, uh, down here, 2250. Okay. And on the upside resistance is 68, 72. And then we're back to like what? 80, 76, 80. Okay. But the ranges are narrowing. So we're going to get, uh, like NR four days, narrow ranges, NR sevens, those kind of things. So the deal is is to be prepared for when this all unwinds either up or down because after you get a sideways pattern one thing you know is you're going to get a trend to break out afterwards i still lean on the short side of things here um just due to the fact that how far we've moved and the uh, bullish sentiment in um, option buyers on they were buying calls here but we're marking time okay so just keep an eye on it uh, overhead resistance 67.7. There's 22.70. Okay, basically you're basically playing sideways until you get a breakout, either up or down. And then, I, like I said, I'm looking for a failure that they jab up, it can't hold it, it comes back in. Uh, I need one underneath here just in case we come back down. All right. Gold, okay, gold, still having difficulties getting over the, the 12, 20 part uh, uh, area. Um, it's about half back this morning on here. Um, same type of deal, we have a sideways pattern here. You know, it's either, gold's either gonna break up and go higher, um, uh, or it'll come back and, and trade lower on here. But like I said, it's all sideways and you're waiting for, you know, we're all waiting for some sort of move on here. You can always stand aside. Here's the dollar, okay, dollar index. Uh, dollar index poked its head below 100. Um, I'd like to see it drop and go to say 99 in that because then we'd get a little, um, uh, then we it would help out cracking the, the sideways patterns here. I'll treat the dollar index right now as like a head and shoulders pattern. If it moves up in this next area um, after 103, if it does break through here, we're talking also with raising interest rates 103. Um, then it goes to the 105 area. But I'm looking for some sort of end game here on the dollar after you know five years. Um, we still have some more time. Um, you know, the, the, the upper target is around, um, you know, 120 under Clinton, but we don't have that robust economy. We have the, we have the 1930s type economy after the Great Depression where it's just kind of mediocre at best. Okay. And remember, everything that comes out of Washington is going to take time. And one thing I was thinking about, make the whole of making America great again, if we're just going to do infrastructure pr projects and stuff, that may be good for the STEM people. But could you imagine all the STEM people now that we've been pushing through college to, to for shovel-ready jobs? You know, you do need engineers and that for these projects. 
uh, you still have to get the projects through and you still have to fund them. So it, it may look good on paper, um, but you know, we're going to have to sell a lot of paper um, to fund these projects, domestic projects. We have the money, we just spend it in the wrong departments. Well, turning airplanes into helicopters kind of spending. Um, the, like the dollar, same type deal here. I'm defensive on this one here. It just, it just, you know, I'm going to treat this also as like a head and shoulders uh, pattern here on the dollar. Dollar comes back, then you know, 99, 98, 97. Um, I really don't think it'll get that deep uh, because of the people who want to play this. Because we 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 haven't raised rates enough. But remember back in 1937, uh, United States, uh, the Fed raised rates once and then had to drop rates because the economy got soft and then stocks fell 50% uh, in four months. So uh, if, our, if our Great Recession matches the Great Depression, <laughs> we're, gonna need, we're gonna need something to get us out of the, the malaise that we're in right now uh, to get everybody working. That's the key to the whole economy is paychecks. All right, so the dollar. All right, Euro dollars. Talked about this before. I wrote yesterday about the hard run in Euro dollars. This is a good start. Um, basically, it's, I'm just calling it a short cover and rally for right now. Um, and it was part of it was the money flow and things of that nature. Euro dollars, uh, they go the other way. Um, what do we have about 99 there's you know the gap fill but these are contract rollovers so but it's the same type of play out as you know the beginning of last year you know where we had kind of a run up in here like i said in and in my ideal world interest rates drop over the first couple of quarters uh so people can buy homes all right and i think we have a housing number out this morning too uh, but right now for euros, like I said, uh, I think, you know, if they go in theory and if they go higher, that means people are parking their cash. But I'm leaning that this is just going to be a lot more uh, uh, short covering rally to start it off. Things should get it. Like I said, things should get interesting here. Uh, copper, uh, basically across the top here. I lean that I'd rather, you know, I'd rather look at areas of shorting it uh, to go lower. Um, um, Versus on the long side, uh, the, with a stronger dollar, we have to consume this domestically. Okay, so we have difficulty with exports. Um, if the dollar does come off, though, it will help some exports. So that's why I said I kind of wanted to get under 100. All right. Um, dum, 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 dum. Sideways pattern traded higher, blah, blah, blah. We're, this is where we're at. If you are long copper, uh, 280. You know, 280, 293, 94, and then, you know, I start talking, you know, 306, 310 area if you're long on that one. I just, I'm just kind of lean that it's just a short cover and rally in a larger degree uh, uh, bear market. Uh, hogs, same type of deal if you're a producer, um, uh, or no, it's cows. Um, same type of deal on cows. And just to me, it's like a, a, a bounce in a bear market. Uh, let me try this here. Well, oh, man, cocoa, you know, it's been a precipitous sell off. The money flows come out of it. You know, they say go with the trend. So, what you're looking for is some sort of shorting opportunity, not a long. The, the money is coming out of it here. So, it is oversold, but that was also said at other spots when commitment of traders report changed and things of that nature. So I prefer to just look for places to short on cocoa. Coffee, coffee just like with sugar, uh, the bodies are in it. Uh, if I play it off a weekly on here, um, uh, you know, you could say that this is the first wave and then the pullback and now we're on wave three, but the money's in there and this is on a weekly. So. It, Keep your tight uh, stops tight on here, but I still respect the trend, you know, just like with uh, sugar. You know, the bodies are in here. This is a good five wave move up. Um, I did mention that this could be like A wave, B wave, and then C wave and sugar here. Um, 17 down to here and risk it as, as deep as 15. Now you're beginning to cut back to 60% of the, tr the pattern, and that, that begins to talk about negating stuff. Um, but sugar hasn't had a real big, good party here, you know, above um, uh, 
you know, above 24 to kind of go run to the 30s and 40s for a while. So I still respect the trend on the weekly here, you know. Uh, Natty Gas. Okay, Natty Gas, the bodies are still in here on the weekly. Okay, we have, you know, this is a, a few more weeks than I'd like to see for bull. Uh, Natty did come down in here and tried, you know, fill this, this gappy area uh, daily. Um, we have the, we have the daily. Okay. So, you know, the first things first is, is that, you know, if, if I believe, you know, if the trend is up and that's what I believe it is, um, you're looking for areas to buy, uh, you know, I'm, I'm writing that this is somewhat of a larger sideways degree, uh, pattern for right now. Um, a few more days left until this contract comes off the board. So, um, you know, I still lean side, you know, bullish sideways to up on here, and the the deal is is to be able to have some stain power. If Nanny comes back through here, okay. Um, uh, you know, basically sideways. <laughs> you know, just a larger degree sideways pattern here. You know, I talked about this being a shoulder ahead and another shoulder. Uh, for Natty Gas here, um, the, the the deal here is the breakout is uh, I'll just say around three fifty. They have to stay in here, you know. To, to me, look at this: ten months of straight up, we get a pullback. The bodies are in it on a weekly basis, so it is susceptible to any pullback um, uh, below here. It did get down; it got close and came off of it here. So, you know, it's, it's one of the, like I said, it's one of those, you know, the risk type deals, you know, like down here is, is you know, the EIA when it all got started on the way up and here we are with the pattern. So I just kind of look at this as, you know, like a larger sideways pattern like this here. But, um, you know, one of these years we're going to get a very, you know, sh shortly we're going to get a very dry and uh, cold winter. And, you know, after uh, uh, off of a 17 year low, um, you know, my risk is less, you know, it can only go to zero when I got to 161, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, you have to have powder if it does, if they do decide to unwind it here in um, February or March kind of thing here. But like I said, you know, the, the whole deal is, is, you know, you stay with the trend, which is up for me, and you're looking for places to buy, all right, on any pullback. But you have to, you have to, have to save some powder here to hold on to this. Nikkei, it broke out of its little pattern, had a reversal back. I used, That's like short covered for me, and it came back down, and we're doing it again. So we may have a secondary distribution area here. Definitely how these things feel is that uh, since today's Tuesday, the next couple of days, we're going to figure out what we're going to do with these here. We're either going to break out higher, um, or uh, they're going to falter like the Nikkei did here. So like I said, you know, um, you know, once once they uh, uh, once they lose their sideways pattern, we're going to get a trend here. Okay, here's the uh, Nasdaq. That was the one I said it would probably uh, lead the way today. Um, uh, overhead resistance is uh, fifty seventy eight, and then uh, we'll say fifty eighty eight. And here's the pivots. Okay, so if it closes below. 50, 56 today kind of thing, then you want to stay on the short side of things here. Remember, as we raise interest rates, we're trying to jam the economy into the ground. So we're, we're walking our, you know, uh, our way into a recession here. Um, sideways pattern again, it's get, trying to give it a go up in here. So we'll see if we, you know, if they open it. it my, I'm leaning that they move them higher on the open this morning. Um, and then we have to see about that, see if there's any follow through on here. Okay, NASDAQ. Sugar, we went through sugar. Silver, same type of deal. It rammed into its happy place here. You've got a possibility of a double top here. It's maybe a larger sideways pattern. I could look at it as a shoulder ahead and another shoulder, but for me, 
I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not interested in silver until it's back, you know, below eight bucks for a longer term accumulation. Russell, okay, Russell is the first one to crack. Russell took off as the leader on the post-election thing. We had our sideways pattern, and it, it's cracking through. So you're, what you're looking for is, is uh, you know, that it loses it here. So then all of a sudden you have, you know, one of the, you know, four markets is cracking here. This one looks to be a little bit tough to get it to go through up in here. So watch for any type of failure. If the NASDAQ moves it moves higher, you know, this will probably pull it along, but you're looking for the failure here. And like I said, I don't think any of these lows are gonna hold. And we'll end up going back to the lows of 2016. Um, that's how I look at it there. So you have to be on your defensive there. <laughs> Ultra bonds and stuff, the bonds, notes, and bills. And I'm looking for some sort of swing wave up in here, which would mean that equities come off. That's what I'm looking for, an area to add to, to fresh shorts on here. That's what I'm looking for, okay? Some sort of swing up here to add fresh shorts. Uh, fixed futures, like I said before, I'm gonna treat this as a bull flag, okay? Uh, as the, here, the the uh, Dow came down for uh, a third down here, so it needs you know if it's going to slingshot, you know, it swiped through the bottom here, you know, if it's going to slingshot, uh, you know, it made a lower low, so it triggered all the stops. Now, now the, the 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 strong hands have the and they have to get rid of the stuff. So the deal here is that I'll treat this like an A, B, C pattern and then a slingshot through into new highs. Okay, but like I said, I'm watching for some sort of failure with these here. That they don't hold for whatever reason because we're, we're long in the tooth. We're eight years into this bull market, so we're definitely looking for some sort of end game. And like I mentioned before yesterday, I'm looking for the stock market to double by the time we hit the real estate peak in seven, six, seven years. Okay, so that's only a double in seven years. What is that, 8% a year? So it's, it's you know, uh, you know, there's definitely gonna be other places you can find 100% in, in seven years. You know, Netty doubled last year, you know, and it can double again. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking for failures on here. Uh, bonds, same type of deal. I'm looking for some sort of swing up here to add shorts, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, corn, um, same, bodies are in it. I look at this as just a corrective pattern. On a weekly, it looks pretty, but uh, uh, you know, I just, I'm, I'm, my greed is, is I want to buy these things down underneath the, the all the lows. You know, they had the, the whole choppy thing looks like cotton. Uh, twos, fives, and tens, same type of deal. I'm looking for some sort of another swing higher to add for our shorts. And bean oil, um, we'll treat this as like a head and shoulders pattern. Uh, bean meal, same type of deal. It did break out and it is still holding about 50%. Um, but like I said, I just kind of treat this as a uh, corrective pattern here. Uh, no, it's same type thing in there. Uh, soybeans themselves here. A lot of bodies are in this, so any failure through here, you should get massive unwinding. And then I think I have OJ over here too. So same type of deal. You're looking for something in here. Uh, OJ came down. I talked about a lottery ticket for March calls. Sometimes they get uh, they get a freeze in Florida, but it doesn't seem to be happening here. But the deal, but that's just the whole lottery ticket aspect of this. You're trying, you know, that's basically it. Does Florida get a freeze between now and we'll say March or April, that kind of thing, you know, because it's coming off the high. What do you have? You're going to have a whole bunch of unwinding. It's a thin market. That looks like it held here on the pivots it's once 160. So I don't really recommend anything, but I just toss that up for those of you who, you know, do do that kind of thing. <laughs> go walking into a thin market against the, the collapse and go, okay, I'll go for that short, sharp, and quick bear market rally. Uh, 185, 186 would probably be it. Uh, maybe a little bit lower, 182, 180, you know, 160 to 180 is 20 times, uh, 20 points in OJ. Um, let's see, I didn't do wheat. Wheat, I think, is still holding up here. 
money is beginning to move into it, but we're getting some sort of swing. Just, just trail your stops up there. Um, uh, you know, if it breaks support down in here, what did I say? 22 or 23, uh, comes back through, then it'll probably swing lower here. You know, uh, that all gets tied into the dollar, um, on that. And then, uh, back around Aussie dollars, just trading it sideways. The money flow says that there's still more room to run to the upside, but it's running into its happy place here. Uh, same thing with Kiwi. British pound, um, good volume day there. The breakout, we've got it back up to 25 and a half. Uh, you know, that's how quickly it moved, kids, right? One, you know, you're at 120, and then before you know it, you're at 125. All right, I'm still looking for the 30s in here. I think British pound and the Mexican peso um, uh, decent products for this year. Uh, Canadian dollar, the, the, the lean was that it trades higher here through, you know, I'm just a replay of 1985 to 1987 is kind of how I'm looking at it. You know, commodity prices take off in a drought, uh, it'll pick up there too. Uh, here we are. What did we get to 107 on the euro? You know, we talked about that before down in here at 10, you know, whatever that, you know, who's looking for it to get to, you know, 109, 111, 113 area here. So I'll just, I'll still kind of lean that way. The money flow it still has room to run up here. Um, you know, but that they're kind of choppy to up. Um, this one, the, uh, we did get back down to, uh, we traded under 114 for the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. I was looking for, what did I say, 113, 111, and that goes back, that goes back into that letter back in December down here. Okay, so, um, any more of the Japanese yen going higher, we're going to get an unwind. Now, the Japanese yen will also get stronger because they own our debt if bond prices go higher, Okay. That was basically what you had going on here, higher bond prices, and we started raising interest rates, and so now we're getting a bounce in bonds kind of stuff. So bonds continue, the yen should get stronger, which mean the U.S. dollar yen would probably go back down to like uh, around the 110, 109 area from uh, where we at, like 113 and change, I believe. Uh, Mexican peso, same thing. Did, News related with the Donald Trumpster and stuff, this thing is just going to go the other way after a precipitous decline. And the Kiwi, the same thing as, um, as the Aussie dollar. Um, you're looking for places to short it because when we, when we continue to raise interest rates, it's going to hurt all these. Um, you know, Kiwi to lose a couple thousand pips. And we're back to, to oil on here. So there you have that. Let me look at something real quick here. This is um, today's uh, economic calendar. I want to see about Friday. GDP we have on Friday here and durable goods, um, refrigerators and cars and things of that nature. So we have GDP on Friday and we're going to see how things are going. Uh, a lot of data on Thursday. Okay, so, you know, if the market cracks and then we get some bad data somewhere in here, um, the, the markets may flush itself. This would be like the, you know, buy the rumor type deal and this would be sell the news in the marketplace. And take a look at where we're at with our little pink dots on here. All right, for the new subscribers, what I have here is the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ and the pink dots of the summation index, which is basically accumulation, um, accumulative uh, of the issues participating in a rally. So here the market moves up, you get more issues, the market moves up, you have more issues, market moves up, and you're not getting the issues. So it's selective buying that's going on here and holding the stuff up. Same type of deal here with the NASDAQ. You get select, you know, lots of issues, market goes up, lots of issues, market goes up, market goes up, and issues are actually rolling over here. So you're getting an underlying divergence on here, just kind of like here, you know, up, 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 divergence. A few months, you know, one quarter of time, and then the NASDAQ goes from 5,200 down to 4,200 right there. You know, a quick 20% drop, right? Instead of about around 20, 18% or so. So that's the same thing as I'm looking for, right? They poke, oh, I have a new all time high. Yeah, then the issues aren't coming with the story here. There, you're running on a blood or oxygen. All right. So everybody have yourself a fabulous day, and uh, I'll talk to you later. I'll smoke double time on here. Bye bye.